Hey everybody, I made a friend and we're going to do a van tour because it's pretty incredible what he's done with this place. <laughs> so, to begin with, who are you? <laughs> My name's Robert and I'm a camp host and just a guy who lives in a van down by the river. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. This is a 2012 GMC Savannah extended van, cargo van. How did you find it? Uh, Craigslist of all places. Oh. In Salt Lake City. In Salt Lake. And I lived in Las Vegas. Okay. But I could not find vans. I was looking for three months and I just couldn't even find one. Why live in a van? Just escape from the, you know, just the American lifestyle that we all think is the best way to live. What did you do before this? I was a golf course superintendent, so I've always been outside. And always loved camping and doing stuff outside anyway. I mean, I've been outside most of my life, so, you know, this is just a natural, easy progression. And I hadn't gone camping since I moved south into Las Vegas or California because it's too crowded or there's no place to go. Didn't really know where to go camping. And, you know, when it's 110 degrees outside, you don't want to go camping in a place that has no shade. Right. So this was just a kind of a reprieve to come back and get it back into the woods and the mountains and the streams and see the things that I believe are truly beautiful in life. I mean, I'm, I'm all about simplifying my life, simplifying everything. And I think life normally is just way too complex. Too many inputs, too many things going on all the time. And this was a way to just calm it all down and simplify it and, you know, it's a five-year experiment. Maybe it'll go longer, maybe it'll go shorter. I don't know. But so far, after nine months, I like it. I, I, in fact, I love doing it. Yeah. It's great fun. How do you like being a camp host? Because you're quite young. You have to still work yet. Yeah, I'm not too Social Security age yet. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's all right. It's not a hard job. It's an easy job. Um, pays okay. I mean, I keep thinking, I'm, I'm making $500 a week to, to, live, to do this. Yeah. You know, it's to live out here. Monotonous, I, but I would it's do easy. It, yeah, I would do it anyway. Yeah. You know, I would come up here and stay, maybe not for three months, but... Right. But I would come up here and stay, so why not get paid to do it? And, and you've done some really incredible things to make it more comfortable while you're here. So if it's cool with you, can we do a van tour? We can. We can do a van tour. That's not canned or planned. How long did it take you to build this? Uh, I had... Six weeks from the moment I pulled into my nephew's garage, I basically wanted to finish up in six weeks so I could get back on the road before the weather changed here in Oregon and got super, super cold. A very simple thing to know is I had a budget, $15,000 all in. That included the van and everything I built into it, so I had to stick within that budget. So there are different budgets. I mean, we see van tours all the time of these $100,000 vans and they're really fancy. This isn't fancy. This yeah, but it's is, practical. This is practical and it achieves the two things that I wanted, which was, one, it's comfort. I wanted extreme comfort just like I had in my house. And it just, I wanted something that I knew would last too, which is why I got the 2012 version of the van and not a 2001 or anything older with a lot more miles on it. So I got this, it had 119,000 miles on it. The front's all pretty much the same other than I spun the chair around to mm -hmm. give me a little more room. It's kind of nice. It's really opened up another place to sit other than on the bed. Mm -hmm. I just installed screening inside the window so I can keep the windows open. And it's just simple Velcro. It's not a very pretty job. I was trying to figure out if this is going to work or not. So I just went with Velcro because I have a lot of Velcro in here. It's very simple design. I actually kind of stole this from Bob Wells' design because it was, I like the way he did his, but the way he had it. He had some shelving and cabinets up front like this and then the bed in the back. I, uh, my bed had to go lengthwise because I could not sleep across in any way, shape, or form. So that was a challenge. So I just went lengthwise. I, I stole this design off a guy named Dual X on YouTube. 
where the bed folds just on sliders, slides up into a couch. Unfortunately, my mattress doesn't allow me to do that right now, but that's okay. It hasn't really bothered me too much, but I'll eventually change that so I can put it in the couch position and access more of my storage. Walk me through your storage solutions over here, because I think that's something, especially in like a standard size van, that a lot of people are curious about is storage. Yeah, and it's, it's a particular challenge because you, whatever your hobby is, your fun thing, you, you got to plan your storage kind of around that. Mine was golf. I needed a place to put my golf clubs. The other second challenge was, of course, my cat and her litter box, which was a big time challenge of where to put that. It ended up finding a home between the seats, but it's been in four different places. I mean, I'll just keep moving it around until I found something that worked. So, uh, that was important to have a closet and a shelving unit and a refrigerator down below. So this is basically my kitchen right here. These two shelves and the refrigerator, and then this also stores pots and pans in here. And just little stuff like that. So I don't have a lot of anything. I have like two plates and two bowls and two two of everything. So you don't need a lot. I don't need a lot. And then it has a junk drawer on the bottom. So all the weights down here keeps this steady. No matter how you live, you need a junk drawer. That's for sure. Yep. And this thing falls over a lot. That's why I've had a bungee cord. But with all the junk in the bottom, it stays fruit. It's funny. Perfect. Everything I had in here has fallen out, fallen over at one point or another and required a solution to keep it in place. So you see lots of bungee cords, lots of Velcro holding things down. Everything you can find most everything on Amazon. That's for sure. Yeah. I have just six LED lights that I put in the roof. And because, you know, it's, it's amazing how dark it is in here. So these things are on like all the time. <laughs> they're, on, they're on like 20 hours a day and they're running great. And then basically it's the bed and then just a long counter. I think that counter is 84 inches long, uh, 20 inches wide. And I just wanted a very simple design, nothing fancy. Uh, but it holds everything that I need on it. I can use it for multiple things. You know, living in a van, you're always moving stuff around. You know, you gotta pull this out and move it over here so you can get back at something else. And, Having that big counter with lots of space just allows you to put stuff down, get what you need, put it back. Makes it a lot easier. And then I have so much storage underneath the counter. And of course, underneath the bed is a lot of storage as well. I think there's four milk cartons and a couple of plastic crates underneath just the bed part itself. And then underneath the counter, there's two more just milk cartons full of stuff and some more plastic bins and stuff and they just keeps it nice and organized and very easy to access. Well, you can't stand up in your van. Cannot stand up in the van, no. Has that been an issue? Not really because when I do have to stand up to do something, see I can kind of arch my back. It's not uncomfortable. It's not great. I'm not standing up, but I can stand my legs straight. And it's not uncomfortable for me, so it makes it a lot easier. I would love to be able to stand up, but you can go outside and stand up too. And the only time you can't go outside is when it's raining or it's windy or something and the weather's bad. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you should be outside. Yeah, it's kind of the point of the life, isn't it? It is the point of the life to be inside and outside. Yeah. But I've sat in here when it rained for eight straight days and sisters and just comfortable and watching videos. And no problems. What would you do at home if it rained straight, eight straight days? Sit on the couch and watch TV. For, that's right. So it's like, so what's it's the, the difference? The exact same thing. And that's kind of what I wanted to do was mirror a little bit of my home life because I am kind of a homebody and I just like hanging out and watching videos and TV or listening to music or reading books. And, you know, this, this allows me the comfort to do that. Now, you obviously, between the fridge, the fans, uh, and everything else, you have power in here. Tell me about how you power the van. Well, I started off with just a 100 watt panel, which was the original 
the guy had built, he just had a 100 watt panel on there. And I had gone down and I bought 225 amp hours worth of batteries, AGM batteries. And I have an alternator charged so I can charge the batteries from the alternator. I can basically charge my batteries three ways, solar, alternator, or I have a thing that I can just plug into any outlet and charge them. Um, you know, a little battery charger. So I can charge them three different ways, which is important because you don't want to, your batteries are probably the most important part of your van. Um, the 100 watt panel was great, no problems, but after three or four days the batteries would be dipping down around 12.1, 12.0, and I would have to turn the van on and charge them up that way if I wasn't getting any solar, but the 100 watt panel wasn't enough, so I changed it, went to Santan Solar and put 500 watts of pan panels on the roof, and now I have zero problems. How much did 500 watts of solar cost you? Those were $90 a panel because they're used panels. It's You can't beat Santan Solar for... Where's Santan Solar? Gilbert, Arizona, outside of Phoenix. And it's... You can't beat their prices. And other than that, it's a real simple design. Like I said, it's just a countertop. I use this two and a half gallon uh, water container that I got from the container store for water. I don't have a sink. Don't need a sink. I got one of those collapsible rubber sinks. Yeah. I've used it one time. Don't How do you it. wash your dishes? I just go outside and spray them with soap and a paper towel and then some vinegar and water, paper towel, and they're clean. I haven't had any problems with it. How do you take a shower? Uh, that is usually done by going to a gym or a friend's house because I don't have a lot of water facilities on here. I can only carry, I carry most of my water in one gallon jugs and I keep them in the, behind the front seat there. And uh, I can carry 11 and a half gallons of water is I think all I carry with me. I could carry more, I have room for more, but that's enough, that gets me through 14 days. Everything was designed to, so I could go out for 14 days. And when I first took it on the road and went down to my first camp spot, I just, I would loaded up with groceries and stuff and I was, let's see how long I can stay here. And I ended up staying 21 days till I ran out of water and had to get water. Is there anything that you particularly want to show about your van? Like something that you think is really helpful to people? Yeah, I think, you know, there's just little tricks that I thought were, I, that I watched, saw during videos. Like yeah. in my shelving unit, I've got little push lights installed. Oh. So, and Where'd I saw... Where did you get these? Oh, I just got them on uh, Amazon or Fred Meyers or just some store. Show and me how they work again. Let me just push them. Oh. Uh, I, just other, other tips that I thought was important. Put stuff where you're going to be and need it. So, I mean, when I first put everything inside the van and packed it into its corners, and then as I used the van, I, this would be over here in these shelves, and I was sitting back here, and I'd have to move, and of course it's not that far to go, but when you move things actually where you're going to be to use it, makes makes it a lot easier. So, you know, like I say, all my kitchen stuff's up here. My stove's over here. I just pull it out, heat my water up. Coffee's right here. Everything's convenient. Coffee cups right here. When I'm watching TV or anything like that, my laptop, my television, well, my power station for my Jackery. I mean, everything's right there where I don't have to really move around to, to access it. And I think, like I said, the other tip that I would always recommend to people, because people do this on their beds, but this is just oh. your cheap pleather, whatever, but it's waterproof. And trust me, I've spilled a lot of things. I forget there's a glass sitting on here. My water bottle will be sitting on here, and I go driving off. It goes down. My sleeping bag gets wet. Everything gets wet, but my bedding doesn't get wet. And so it's just... A good idea. Is that a futon cover? It is a futon cover. Is it? It's uh, like leather, like faux leather. Yeah, it's that fake leather stuff. But Let's again, see. it's it's waterproof, and that's what I wanted. I didn't want to get, you know, mm -hmm. my bed soaked in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Well, I just when you're doing it, if you're doing your install, put plenty of electrical outlets in here. I mean, honestly, I probably only needed one 12 volt, maybe two, but I have. 
four because if I need them, they're there. And it's really easy to do when you have the band and you're building it. Once it's done, it's a pain in the butt to put a new one in. So go ahead and feel the freedom to go ahead and run your electricity with extra outlets. And it's nice to be able to plug things in in different spots too. So that's very helpful. So that would be one of my other tips is for some chance to move stuff around. Because you never know, you move stuff in your van all the time. I mean, you've probably done it in your trailer. Constantly moving stuff around until it kind of fits what works for you. Mm -hmm. Tell me about traveling with cats. Cats are can be a challenge traveling because, you know, they don't like the motion and stuff like that. So, And you always got to worry about them running away. I tried harnessing and with a leash and all that. My cats don't like those. They threw them off. And she's a great cat because I just let her run free outside. I, in fact, that's what happens. I get woken up in the morning to open the door so she can go do her thing and I just go back to bed. Yeah, she really is like a dog. And she just runs around, does her little loop around the van and comes back and gets her food and treats. You know, so it's, it's lucky. She's, she's an, a special unusual. cat. She's an unusual cat. I really thought that they, they wouldn't stick around at some point, but they have. Now your van doesn't smell like cat box or anything. It must be that pine litter. You use it. That was my question. You use pine litter. Yep, you use pine litter for the cat box and for my toilet. <laughs> Tell me about your deck. All right. Well, I I did see an inspiration for a deck on a van, and I thought, hey, there's a cool idea, especially for standing on top and doing photography, which is my hobby, is to shoot photography. I wanted a place that I could stand and then when I picked up the van in Salt Lake City I was driving down the freeway to Vegas and I hit a thunderstorm and the thunderstorm the rain hit the roof so loud I mean it was unbelievable how loud it was and I said well that's not good because that's too noisy and it would wake me up and you know in the middle of the night or anything like that I said too noisy and I thought well the van will block that the roof the deck will block that and it does. It does a great job. I don't hardly hear it when it's even raining. I don't even know. And I've been in some thunderstorms since, but it doesn't pound the wall so loud. I can still watch my videos or whatever I'm watching inside the van. It's not loud at all. How did you make this thing? I just went out and I actually, I didn't use regular wood. So I had, originally the van came with the two, um, whatever these things are called. Uh, roof rack stuff okay um i had two of them so i added two more and then i took wood uh that kind of plastic decking stuff that people use because i knew it wouldn't rot out with the weather and that was better so we just built a little wood frame underneath it to hold it in place on top of the uh um what are those things called again <laughs> the roof rack thing roof rack bars they're round for some reason. Like the no cargo bars. So we had to put a piece of wood on there and then treat it out with waterproofing as well. And then put that on top and it's, because it doesn't, won't break down. And it's a little soft. Is it real plastic decking? Yeah, it's just that fake wood plastic stuff, huh. but it's actual decking. We got it from a lumber yard. And I think they're 12 foot lengths. So it fit right on top of the roof and it was great because I could mount my solar panels on it and I put my storage bag up there and still have room to put the tripod and stand up there and sit on it with a chair. I can sit in a chair with my tripod up and shoot photos nice. extremely comfortably and, and get some nice views. And then having just all this stuff, it allowed me to put these little hooks on there which I hang my shade cloth from so I can shade the van. Even though I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I can still put shade on the van and do all sorts of things with it. It's really a nice feature to have. Not, I don't see too many vans with roofs on them. I don't think I've ever decks. seen a deck on a van. And it did take my mileage from 17 and a half to 14 and a half. But it's that's worth right. it. It's worth it. I think it's very important to kind of know what you want in your van. And that's one of the great things about the van life is everybody has different ideas. 
and it's just so cool to look at other people's stuff and and so, oh that's that's a good idea and implement those things and put them into your own van for your own personal thing don't worry about what it looks like or or any of that stuff no, you're not worried about what anybody else thinks this is your van and then set a budget because I think it's real easy to go nuts I mean I have a 2,000 4,000 watt inverter in here that I haven't even turned it on yet and that cost me $300 and I don't even need it. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I didn't need it. I thought I might if I ever got a microwave or something. But I don't have any room for a microwave. So. so do those things. Plan it out. And get yourself a budget. And then just get out and do it because it's, it's really a good lifestyle. It's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of great people. And, uh, you know, it's... It's, it's just a lot of, it's a good lifestyle. It's not bad. Oops, Katie. Katie bumped your camera. And just, yeah. But a lot of people are afraid to go. I see this all the time because I participate in Bob Wells, Howa Chats and stuff. People are just kind of scared. Don't be scared, just go do it. Because once you make the decision and do it, it's, you're just, you're, you're going to turn a page in your life and create a new chapter. And just always remember that, you know, you're not stuck to this lifestyle. If you don't like it, you could just turn around in six months' time and sell the van and, and move back into your apartment. So you're not stuck to it, so... But try it and just get out there and do it. Because once you're experiencing it, it just gets better and better and better each month as you go along. Robert and Kitty, thank you so much for sharing your life and your house and your wisdom with us. Um, any parting remarks? No, I just hope people enjoy the video. One, hope it's entertaining for you. Two, hopefully you get a couple ideas or some tips when you're doing it yourself. And just three is just, just have fun. Like and subscribe to Lex's channel. <laughs>